All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Thanks for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover today. We're talking about some pretty significant PlayStation 5 game rumors. We also have some updates for PlayStation 5 games that are coming out, but also some games that are already out. So before we dive into these topics, if you end up enjoying the video or finding informative, leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. We're starting here with some good news for Baldur's Gate 3. It's going to be getting a physical edition for all platforms. This is being reported by Gaming Bolt. They say Larian Studios recently teased an announcement for a physical release of its acclaimed RPG Baldur's Gate 3 this week. And amidst much excitement for the game, the developer has now made it official by unveiling an upcoming deluxe edition for the game, which will be available on PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC. In addition to the game itself, the deluxe edition will include a collectible box designed in the style of the original Baldur's Gate games, developed by BioWare, the original soundtrack, a double-sided map of the game's setting, 32 stickers, two patches, and a Mind Flayer poster. Interestingly, while the game will come on a single disc on PC, for PS5, it's actually going to ship with two discs, and on the Xbox Series X, it's actually going to come with three discs, which is kind of crazy. So it says the game will be playable on disc on consoles, but PC players will require an internet connection. The digital deluxe edition is going to release sometime in Q1 2024, and it will be priced at 80 US dollars. So some good news here for anybody who likes to collect physical copies of games. This is one of the biggest games to come out this year, probably one of the biggest games of the generation. And it would have been, I think, really unfortunate if it never did get a proper physical edition. So there you go. If you're somebody who is interested in Baldur's Gate 3, or if you've been playing it, let me know if this is something you're planning on picking up. Moving on to the next topic, we have a leak regarding an upcoming game that people are very much excited about, Dragon's Dogma 2. Apparently, the release date has actually leaked. Being reported by Push Square, they say it's possible that the release date of Dragon's Dogma 2 has just leaked. Ahead of the game's planned showcase on November 28th, Peggy, that's Europe's age ratings board, has published its information page on the Action RPG, and guess what? The page actually lists a specific release date. It's being marked for March 22nd, 2024, according to Peggy, which, to be fair, would fit everything we know about the project so far. Capcom had previously stated that a major undisclosed title would arrive before the end of this fiscal year, and this leaked date would make Dragon's Dogma 2 the obvious choice. And so, yeah, we need to wait for official confirmation, but this does seem like it's going to end up actually being the date. It does fit there perfectly, and it seems like Peggy may have actually messed up here, but it's a game that I know a lot of people are really looking forward to. I'm actually excited for it. I never did play the first game, but I've heard really good things about it, and from what I've seen of the sequel, it actually looks really fun. I like what they're doing with it, so there you go. It's really beginning to look like 2024 is going to be another absolutely stacked year for AAA game releases. Let me know if you're going to be picking this up when it comes out in March. Moving on to the next topic, we have an interesting update for the title Immortals of Avium and how it may be added to PlayStation Plus to attract players. That's according to the game's director. Being reported by PlayStation Lifestyle, Immortals of Avium director Brett Robbins thinks that the game may be added to subscription services like PS Plus and Xbox Game Pass in order to expand its player base. Developed by Ascendant Studios and published by EA in September, Immortals of Avium received mixed reviews and unfortunately sold pretty poorly. In an interview with Xbox Expansion Pass, Robbins said that he doesn't fully grasp the economics of subscription services and can't say whether the game would have benefited from releasing on PS Plus or Game Pass. However, he's not opposed to the idea of expanding the game's audience and believes that EA may strike a deal to that end, maybe sooner rather than later. And so I figured I would just put this out here because, yeah, this is a title that really seem to underperform in a significant way i think like a week after this game launched there was the announcement that you know layoffs were hitting the studio and it didn't get great reviews but i have heard that the game's actually pretty good or pretty decent so yeah i don't want to necessarily take this as confirmation but it's the closest thing we're going to get 
Um, you know, this is a AAA title, so we we could be seeing it make its way to PS Plus relatively soon. Just figured I would let you guys know about that and what's being said. But moving on to the next topic, we have another update on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is being reported by Push Square. They say Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will ship with three difficulty options when it launches next year on February 29th. The first two, easy and normal, are exactly what you would expect, but an all-new third setting called Dynamic sounds especially interesting. When you select this difficulty option, enemies will actually scale to your level. The official press release reads, quote, In the newly added dynamic difficulty, enemies grow stronger as your characters do, perfect for players who crave a constant challenge, end quote. They say here, we would assume this option has been incorporated due to Rebirth's fairly open structure. You'll be able to travel back and forth between large areas, whether it's to complete side quests or simply explore. This dynamic setting makes it so you won't just be obliterating lower level enemies on your way through old areas. With that in mind, it might be a cool option for players who want to push the combat system at all times. So, yeah, again, this is a game that I know many of you are very, very excited about. And this actually sounds pretty cool. Not something I was really expecting, a dynamic difficulty. It does make a lot of sense considering the open nature of this game. And I think it's a pretty smart decision because, you know, the idea of just kind of running through areas super easily, I think to some players, sounds like it could you know, become pretty underwhelming and make things a little bit boring, right? When you're trying to go back and complete things that you may have missed. So the fact that they're adding this option and making it so that there will be a constant challenge throughout the entire experience, I think some people are definitely going to enjoy that. So figured I would give you guys that update. Moving on to the next topic, though, we have a pretty significant update regarding the PS5 Star Wars KOTOR remake. This is a game that a lot of people have been really wondering like what's going on with it is it canceled is it still being developed unfortunately it seems like it has been canceled and it's just something that they're not ever going to talk about again this was revealed by industry insider jeff grubb and i came across this over on the gaming leaks and rumors subreddit where it says we all thought saber would pick up the pieces but jeff grubb straight up said that right now no one is working on that game and that Sony has actually cut ties with the project. So yeah, seems like this game is canceled, not going to happen. And if it ever does happen, it's not going to really have anything to do with Sony or the PS5 um, in any meaningful way. This I think is quite unfortunate for a lot of people because if you look back at the 2021 PlayStation Showcase, this was what Sony opened that show with, and for a lot of people, it was actually the highlight of the show and the most exciting thing, and to just kind of see, you know, after a couple of years, this is where it ends up. I mean, it's very disappointing. Now, um, Sony did recently claim that the reason why they, like, delisted the trailer and everything and took it off of their YouTube channel was due to licensing, but... You know, if Jeff Grubb is to be believed here, it's clear that they just completely cut ties and have nothing to do with it. So there you go. We are going to move on to the next topic here. We have an update uh, once again when it comes to PlayStation 5 and Spider-Man 2 sales data, this time coming from gamesindustry.biz. Uh, they say here that the best-selling new game of the month was Spider-Man 2 from Sony. By combining GFK and GSD sales together, we can see that the first two weeks are nearly 9% lower than 2018's original Spider-Man, but 94% bigger than 2020's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Compared with last year's big PlayStation game God of War Ragnarok, the first two weeks of sales are 2% higher for Spider-Man 2. Note, God of War Ragnarok was also available on PS4 and PS5, where Spider-Man 2 is purely a PS5 game. So, yeah, very interesting stuff here. Uh, this is for the UK, by the way. And when we look at when it says the sales were nearly 9% lower than Spider-Man 1, that's actually not that bad when you, again, consider this is a PS5 only game. And when Spider-Man... A 2018 launched it was towards the end of the ps4's life cycle where there were you know like 110 million uh ps4s or like 100 million at least i think out there on the market and the ps5 
is only sitting at around 46, 47 million right now, probably going to make its way to 50 million very soon. So that's actually pretty impressive. The fact that it's only 9% lower, you would think that that percentage would certainly be higher. 94% bigger than Miles Morales, but it also says 2% higher than God of War Ragnarok in the first two weeks. So yeah, just once again, reconfirms that or reaffirms, I should say, that Spider-Man 2 is doing just fine. They have an update here on console sales. They say there was a slight drop in console hardware sales in the UK, according to GFK figures. Sales dropped 10% month over month. There was a slight dip of 4% in sales for the PS5, although it was still a very strong month for Sony's console. 56% of PS5 sold in October were the uh, official EA Sports FC 24 bundle and the Spider-Man 2 bundle made up for 6% of sales. The big decline was for the Xbox Series S and X, which suffered a sales drop of 33%. The console had a strong September due to the release of the Series S model and Starfield, which explains the month-on-month -month decline. Microsoft's platform still narrowly manages to stay ahead of Nintendo Switch, which is once again in the third spot. However, Nintendo Switch sales did rise 15% month over month. As we revealed last week, the PS5 has had a 51% market share over the last six months due to strong sales actively over the summer. Xbox has seen its market share drop to 23%, while Nintendo Switch has fallen to uh, 25%. And uh, yeah, it's just once again, just kind of reiterating that right now Sony is doing very well, generally speaking, not a ton of competition. You know, the Switch is beginning to kind of um, slow down and Xbox has generally just been struggling to sell their consoles in a really meaningful way. And so it'll be interesting to see how this data may change going into 2024, but just figured I would keep you guys in the loop with that. But we are going to move on to the final topic of this video, uh, quite possibly the most significant one for some players, and that is The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered or a native PS5 version has been spotted and has also apparently been confirmed to be releasing in early 2024. This is being reported by WCCF Tech. The original article here says a native Last of Us 2 PS5 version has seemingly appeared on the PlayStation Network servers, suggesting that a release of the version is imminent. For quite some time, fans have been asking for a native version of The Last of Us Part 2 on PS5. To date, players are required to play the PS4 version of the game on the PS5, albeit with performance enhancements. From the looks of it, however, Sony is now planning to release a native version of the game as spotted on X by the usually reliable PlayStation game size Twitter account. Uh, a native version of the game has appeared on the network back end. This heavily suggests that not only is this game coming, but it's actually coming soon. But we also have uh, Insider Gaming chiming in here saying that they've spoken to their own sources and were able to independently verify the claim. But on top of that, there's an update to the WCCF Tech article where they say, according to a Hungarian tech journalist, Sony Naughty Dog will be releasing the game in early 2024. This is what he said. It was translated by Google. Quote, just so you know, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered will be released in early 2024. Sony sent out the code requester, uh, and he goes on to say this applies to the PlayStation 5 version. There is no news about the PC version yet. So, yeah, pretty much a flood of information regarding The Last of Us Part 2. What's most interesting to me is the timing of this. We are just a couple of weeks away from the Game Awards, and we are absolutely Sony expecting Sony to show up and make uh, a few announcements. So... At this point, I am 100% expecting The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered to be announced with a release date of early 2024 um, at the Game Awards. And, you know, it's interesting because when you look at early 2024 for the PS5, it's already looking really good with, at least in my opinion, with Helldivers 2 and uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth both launching in the same month. There's also rumors of Silent Hill 2 Remake and possibly Rise of the Ronin also releasing um, in early 2024, but, you know, if you throw in something like The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered in there, I mean, it's really just kind of sweetening the deal. Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of people are going to be upset about this, feeling like Sony is just going 
you know, overboard with the remasters and the remakes. And I understand that. This is not something I'm personally excited about, but it's something that has been rumored for a long time. And we know that Naughty Dog has been working on this for quite some time. I think the real question is if this is all Naughty Dog is going to have to talk about. Everybody's been waiting for them to give us an update on the multiplayer, a possible update on this new game they're working on that they have confirmed. But they've been radio silent and, you know, it is going to be, I think, a, a kind of bad look for Naughty Dog, frankly, if after all this time of being silent and not giving us any meaningful updates on any of the things they've been working on, you know, the last thing they put out was The Last of Us Part 1, which was fine, but, you know, it's a remake of one of their prior games. If the next thing they come out and do is just say, hey, here's The Last of Us Part 2 remastered and... And that's it. It I, Again, I know a lot of people are going to be uh, eager to buy it and play it and re-experience it. You know, it'll, it'll definitely be interesting to see what they can do graphically here. But um, but for me personally, and I think other people also share this sentiment, it, it will be disappointing if that's all we hear from Naughty Dog after all this time. Because it's, it's just, again, it's not the best look when you consider this entire generation so far the only things that Naughty Dog has produced are remakes and remasters, right? I mean, Last of Us Part 1, the Uncharted, um, Legacy of Thieves Collection, and then now The Last of Us Part 2. It's, I just think some people were hoping that we, at the very least, would see something new by now, right? But there you go. It, it looks like it's pretty much guaranteed to be happening. And so, uh, yeah, I want you guys to let me know down in the comments below what you think of this as well as all the other topics we discussed, but that is going to do it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, if you did, be sure to leave it a like. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.